Jason? Yes, sir. I would add that if Mark would like to come out on the weekend sometime and try his luck at it, he is always more than welcome. Well, thank you, sir. If Clark came out here, you might find him jumping in that water. Yeah. <laughs> you might watch this. I'm getting my <laughs> Um, if y'all would, would look back on your uh, agenda and also on the insert in the front of uh, your folder, I'd like to go back with the Chairman's permission and open up for discussion uh, things related to primarily the growth and development issues, you will be dealing with the finances as you get into the uh, budget and you can actually do some more uh, visioning uh, when you put that together. But based on what you've heard today, based on what you have to review concerning the definition of good vision, what it is to establish a vision. Uh, what I have described for some of y'all is basically looking into uh, the future as a blank sheet of paper. Blank from the standpoint you've got all this data, you've got all this information that you can now analyze and begin to formulize in your mind what you think the future will look like, should look like, uh, or could look like based on your assessment. So you really have a clean sheet of paper to begin to forge what the future of Lowndes County will look like as it relates to our roads, streets, and bridges. You have seen uh, that what was put up there earlier, what is in your book as far as where our road system has grown over the last several years. You have seen uh, our water and sewer system where we are today. And you've seen those growth patterns that uh, are that Jason and Carmela have provided. So what does that data tell you as far as these particular items? For instance, in order to talk about roads, road streets and bridges, I think it's important that we look about, look to the SPLOST and T-SPLOST. So I know that not all of you are sold on the concept the T spots. I know some of you are sold and are 100% committed and on board. Um, but I think it's important for y'all to discuss that. Again, there is not uh, there is not a right or wrong. It's what y'all feel as individuals and collectively as a as a board. Where do we go from here, and what do we? The floor is open. So there was some information that came out recently about proving the fact that we are not a donor community to the regional peace club. Is there anything written on that? Is there anything that, that we can have that shows those numbers? Does anybody have any of that? Yeah, let I think me. that's the root of where the concern from the community yeah. was coming from, that we're just basically taking in sales tax dollars and giving it to other communities. Yeah. Well, let me try to clarify this in a sense where hopefully there will be some value. As you know, eventually the choice is whether you do a regional t plus or you do a single county t plus Or no t plus <laughs> Or no t plus Or no t plus Absolutely. Sure. So let's look at them from, from that aspect. Originally, the, the original T-SPLOS um, was looked at from just simply that, from looking at 
and, and the way the regions were divided up were in the, um, the original commissions that was already established. It wasn't any kind of new boundaries that were set and said this is the regional. They just used that model and said, okay, this is how we're going to structure the regions. In our particular case, we're at the far western side. Brooks County is in the 18-county region, but it comprised 18 counties that was in the South Georgia Regional Commission. Um, and so, when I began to look at this, you know, I felt like that certainly Charlton County, for example, would have very little impact on Lowndes County. Um, but reality is, Brooks County, Cook County, Eccles County, Lanier, Lanier Berrien County, does have a huge impact. So, when we begin to look at this, and, I, and I'll tell you, Mary Gale and I talked about this issue, about how, how we should go. And we could have just, or I could have just recommended we just not support the regional concept at all. Well, if we had not done that, or if we had done that, then we would have eventually ended up basically on the outside looking in. In the event that it did come to fruition, the project list was generated, and then if it passed, we were stuck with what we got. Um, the first thing that you have to do is, uh, is agree, number one, is Valdosta to Lowndes County a true regional hub. In my opinion, you have to say, yeah, we're a regional hub. Tiff County is a regional hub. Coffee County is a, a regional hub, and Ware County is a regional hub. All of those counties are within that 18-county region. Well, you, so you couldn't, in my opinion, look at the whole picture and say that it was one, that, that there's one major regional hub within that group. Certainly, Lowndes County is the largest. We have the largest population, so with that, we are the largest hub out of those four hubs. Because the region is structured the way it is, I felt like that it was better to look at it from multiple hubs, from that aspect. Uh, Ware County certainly would benefit more from improvements in Charlton County uh, and, and, and those areas to the east than what we do. But they certainly aren't going to benefit from Brooks County and Cook County and Berrien County like we do. Uh, Tiff County, probably we share a little bit of market bordering there. But looking at it from the regional standpoint, if we're going to look at it from those local hubs, then if Cook County had projects that they were looking at that was going to benefit us, Lowndes County, then those are the kind of projects that we need to be that needs to be considered. So far for the other neighboring counties. So if you look at that in sub hubs, if you want to follow that, then kind of look at it that way. Then it made sense. So Mayor Gale and I just felt like that it was important that we were able to get onto the executive committee because the executive committee took all of the projects that were submitted by all the all 18 counties and then the cities within those 18 counties. Well, bottom line is there was almost a billion dollars worth of projects that were submitted. No way in the world that all of those projects would be able to, to be uh, done. So it was the executive committee's job to begin to narrow those projects down. Well, we did, and, and the group agreed on what I was saying that we needed to look at it from those little sub-regions. And let's try to do projects that would be bit that would benefit that. We were able to accomplish that. We were able to create the overall list of projects, which um, was finalized last week, and the round table, the whole round table, voted and accepted that list. So that list will move forward as part of that that referendum. Now, with that, and through those discussions. Uh, we were we were able to encourage um, GDOT to push into our region 112 million dollars worth of project assistance that would go in there. 
So that helped us a lot to get to that 30% requirement of GDOT projects that had to be, you know, had to be part of the referendum. So we won't collect over the 10-year period as a, as a region. As a region. We, if it passes, we will collect about half a million dollars. Is that right? I'm going to mean as, as a region? Yes, probably so. And then GDOT's put in another 110 million? 112. 112 million? Yeah. So we're looking at basically, if we collect the money in the region, they have to make, you know, 500 million dollars and get another 112 from them. And that, that's the, I think that's the, the difference because they're not going to support you that way if you do an individual count. That's right. I think if you want to sell this project, that's the 112 million that you get from would, would go away. G dot that is going to be the selling factor. My personal opinion, I just have a problem with decreasing taxes because once you increase taxes, they hardly ever go away. Well, let, let me, and I'll address that, and I'm going to probably address it like probably a little bit different than probably what a lot, a lot of folks do. That was the reason why for me that it was important that the referendum as the regional concept goes to the voters. I believe it's their choice. The voters will choose at the poll of whether or not they want to have that increase in that sales tax, not you and I as a commission. It'll be the voters' choice. Um, I think it's our responsibility and the responsibility of the roundtable and the executive committee to put together a reasonable project list that will be important to the region and important to our particular community in order to get that support. And I think you've done a great job for Lowndes County in the projects we talked today with the other we included that piece plus. I think all those projects are good projects. Um, so now I think you've done a great job there. And well, I want to clarify one thing that, and back to, if I, if I may, and thank you, but back to what Scotty's question was originally, to, to answer the donor question, the donor county question. We tried to figure out what was the best way to come up with a basis, let's say, to start the discussion on projects. So we looked at it from a population basis standpoint. And based on the population in Lowndes County, over 10 years, we should raise, and, and I'm, I'm, I don't have the exact number, but I'm going to just get you very, very close. We should be able to raise, in that 10 years, it was estimated that we would raise $92,500,000 in that 10-year period based on the population. We got in value of projects. You saw the $70 million in real value, but ultimately, when you get the... 25%, well, the 25% was in there, but the 10% of uh, the 20% reduction in the L MIG match, uh, the value of those projects comes up to $92 million. So within $500,000 of every penny that every citizen in Lowndes County spends in sales tax will stay in Lowndes County. Now, the reality that of that is, is that as we know, that as a regional hub, we've got a lot of people that come in from outside of Lowndes County to spend their money here. So the, the answer is, is that the true answer is that those tax dollars, yes, will go back out into the regions, supporting areas in some cases where they live at, right. where they come back in our community. Right. It but should be, I think it should be pointed out too, we're trying to sell this thing. That it's like a use tax. He who uses the most will pay the most. Yeah. I think well, that's important to get people to understand. Yeah. You know, the, the key, the key here is, and, and, and what you had said earlier is, fundamentally, you're you're against taxes. You know, against raising taxes of any kind. But I hope I answered that question, at least put you, at least something for you to think about for a little while, is that this process, it's not you or this commission raising the taxes on the citizens. If we were required tomorrow because of the growth that we were having in this community, as we're seeing some of the statistics are showing, the only other option we have is to raise taxes on the property owners in this community. 
to where the sales tax is the best opportunity that we got regardless of what the options are. Now, reality is, would it have been a lot easier if in the House Bill 170 law, if the legislators had had the oomph to come in and say, in the benefit of the whole state, we're raising the 1% sales tax across the board for transportation needs? Absolutely. That would have been an easy thing for everybody, but they didn't do that. They left it up to local government and really the voters in those in those jurisdictions to make that decision. So it's our responsibility to could have put a good project list together. Um, my hopes are is is that fundamentally we can look at this list and say if we're going to build these projects, if they are important enough to be recognized as projects that needs to go on a list to start with, then they should be projects that are important enough for us to support a funding mechanism that is made available to us so that these projects can be built. Because without it, these projects aren't going to get built, not in the next 10 years, but probably in the next 20, 30 years. We built I, I would just like to add a, a comment. Um, I think it's going to be important. I'm glad that we addressed it. Lord knows that. Because <clears throat> when I think back, when they were talking to T-Splash years ago, and me and you, we had just got elected. And we didn't know the even, well, at least I, I'm going to say me, I didn't know even <laughs> our local delegation at that time supported T-Splash until I got to it now. Because they knew the importance of the projects. All I knew was down here with signs on, on every corner, <laughs> both no being separate ways, and, and, and nobody came out uh, against it or in opposition. So I think it's good that we, we, we're talking about it now, but I, I think it's more important that we look at marketing it. Like I said, we're going to be on board with this thing, be on board all the way. Um, you heard me, the project that I, I, I'm concerned with ain't even, you know, in my area, most of the development and projects is in District 2 and District 5, actually. But that's where we, Seeing the economic development is for the good of the county, and, and, and you know, and, and that's why I'm supporting uh, the T splash. But I just want to make sure that you know, when we do go out there, we go out there one front and yeah. And, but keep know. in mind now, go back to what Mike had said earlier. With the T splash, you're you're going to be able to to have funding sources to complete a lot more of those projects that's on the roads because you'll have your, you still, hopefully, you still have your spots, you still have uh, other means to get these roads and, and, and improvements made that without it, you just, you don't have it. It's not going to be there without us finding another funding source and as we all know, um, the only other funding source that's available to us is property taxes. Um, and I, I don't think it's fair for us to look at, or it's not fair for us to discount an opportunity because we want to say it's a tax increase when it's really those citizens that's going to be making, ultimately making that choice of whether or not they choose to do it. Um, I'm sorry, are you about to jump out of your chair? I know you want to say something. I, I just want to go back and ask a question before we get into the discussion of t spots itself, is the project list. Yeah, I think I heard that without maybe some question or reservation, that the actual list that you have before you is acceptable and you don't have a problem with those projects. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, can I add to something to that? Sure. In case the commissioners are questioning. I asked Mr. Pritchard and I asked Mike to generate that list, to look and see what the needs were in the county in one effort so that it would not get politicized. Mike looked at it from a standpoint of what are the true needs that this county needs. Those needs aren't necessarily the commissioner's opinion. It's not my opinion as far as what those needs are. Those needs came from the professional, from the engineer, the recommendation that these were the projects that we needed to do, that we needed to work on for this county. So I took all of that as a tremendous amount of credit to the need of what we needed to do. So 
if that in that list is indeed one that you can live with and you can support, the question to me then is how do you fund that list? Is it through a piece box? obviously place this before the public, as y'all just said, and give them the opportunity to vote it up or down. Assuming it is voted down, then is this list still of such value to you that you want or would consider proceeding with an individual SWAS, t -SWAS, or is it something that you would look for a general Theoretically, we can turn around and still raise the same amount of money to do the individual T squad. In, in theory. Oh yeah, yeah. If you did an individual, if you do an individual T squad, you probably could raise a little bit more money. Well, now, you lose that, but you lose your match. Well, the L make discount. Yeah. Well, if you did individual T squad, you still you lose, lose the twenty five percent. You lose the 25% and you lose your LMIG match. It goes back to 30%. And you risk losing your regular SWAS. The question is, will they? But going back to the insert inside page, you've got that right there at your fingertips. Right. So um, the sheet that's in the front, I think that if I'm hearing correctly your comments, that your vision is the commitment to that road paving list. Um, and then your goals would be set each year on what your funding options were to continue to work on that list. So um, I think this is a great one to start on because if you look at what a good vision is and then you look at the questions involved in establishing vision, I think that that paving list meets every one of those criteria. 